the local resident, Rawan Shang. Dumling Peterson Najarian, Burlingame Miranda Sweet. Hale Water Murphy Kid Priman Spencer. Nelson Chap Ramsey Downs Quinn Kelly Quartermanch Sheehan. Beckerman Lee Engstrom and Golsh. God grant them eternal rest and thank you, gentlemen, for taking care of us. These are the young men honored here on our war memorial. Over the years, Montrose has learned that I regard these boys as my guardian angels. And I come by here most mornings with my dog to pay our respects and thank them for their sacrifice. Memorial Day is a public honoring of such sacrifice and it calls to mind all of those who <coughs> paid that price for our safety. Today, let us remember our brothers and our sisters, our friends and our fathers. Once upon a time, in West Africa, where the fields meet the forest and the river and magical powers can still be found, there was a village called Kundi. And in that village, with his wife and many children, there lived a hunter by the name of Ogalusa. One day, Ogalusa gathered up his weapons and went out into the forest to hunt. His family tended their field, their livestock, their house, the day passed, they ate their evening meal. Darkness fell, and Ogalusa had not returned. Another day passed. Still, he did not come back. They talked about it and wondered what could have detained him. A week passed, and then a month. From time to time, someone would say that father had been gone a long time. But his family tended their field, their house, their livestock. Sometimes his sons went out into the forest to hunt. After a while, no one mentioned Ogalusa's disappearance. Ogalusa's youngest child was a tiny boy named Puli. And one day at an extraordinarily young age, as if perhaps by magic, he began to speak. Puli's first words were, where is my father? His older brothers looked at each other and out toward the forest. Oh, father has been gone a long time. He should have been back by now. Something must have happened. We should go and look for him. And so they did. One of Ogalusa's sons had been gifted with a preternatural ability for tracing animals in the forest. Even if a path were old, covered with grass and underbrush and blown away by the weather, he could find it. His brothers followed him through the darkness of the forest. They came to a clearing among the trees and there, scattered about on the ground, they found Ogalusa's bones and his broken weapons. They knew he had been killed on the hunt and they mourned until one of his sons offered his special gift. I know how to put a man's bones back together, he said. He gathered up the bones and placed each in its proper position. And another one of the brothers said, well, I can cover those bones with sinew and flesh and skin. And each brother in his turn offered his own special magic to bring blood and breath to the body. And then the powers of movement and speech. They stepped back. Ogalusa rose to his feet, picked up his weapons, and returned home with his sons. In a few days, a feast of thanksgiving was planned. A cow from the herd was slaughtered and the village began its joyful preparations. Now in that part of the world, 
it is useful to carry a switch to make a breeze or brush away the flies. Some of these switches were glorious works of art with hair and feather and beautiful decorations. In gratitude for his return, Ogalusa created such a switch. He took the tail from the slaughtered cow and tied it to a beautifully carved handle. He decorated it with paint and beads. The cow tail switch was wondrous to behold and practical too. The day of the feast arrived. The villagers dressed in their brightest clothes, musicians played, the drummers gathered in their circle, women sang, there was feasting and dancing. Ogalusa carried the cowtail switch. All who saw it admired it and praised it, and everyone in the village hoped that maybe someday he could have so beautiful a thing. In the midst of the clamor, Ogalusa raised his hand for silence and swept the cowtail switch to the sky. My friends, he said, I am grateful for my return to you after my time in the land of the dead. Let us rejoice in each other's company and celebrate with thanksgiving. I have made this cowtail switch as a gift for the one who did the most to bring me home. And that's when the trouble started. For one brother piped up, Oh, well, you should give it to me. No one would ever have found you if I did not have the magic to uncover the trail. And another said, Oh, but it was my magic that put Father's bones back together. Oh, but Father would never have lived as just bones alone. And the other brothers were quick to point out that it had been their magic that brought blood and breath movement and speech and then the villagers started to take sides with one brother or another passions and volume rose until ogalusa raised his hand for silence and swept the cowtail switch to the sky to this son will i give it for i owe the most to him Okaluso walked through the crowd toward his wife, where little Puli was standing somewhat unsteadily leaning against his mother. Okaluso dropped to his knees before the child and placed the cowtail switch in the boy's hands. And the village knew that Okaluso was right. They knew that Puli's first words had been, where is my father? And there was a saying among them that a man will never die as long as he is remembered. So on this Memorial Day, let us remember, let us rejoice in each other's company and may God hold us all in the palm of his hand.